Hello, brothers and sisters. Today's sermon has a different kind of beginning. In the ever-expanding effort to bring the words of Adam to all in the wasteland, I set out to crack the code to the Gary language. Garyish? Garyese? Garyan? So they can embrace the glow. The Gary clones reside in Vault 108 in the Capital Wasteland and are one of the most memorable locations in all of Fallout 3. Which is saying something because Fallout 3 has no shortage of such places. They speak their own Gary-centric language, but I'm gonna crack it. So crank up the rads, because things will be getting a little Gary in here. First things first though, there are some rules and parameters for this endeavor. How can we possibly understand the Gary language and translate to it from English? The game shows us a handful of lines that the Gary clones say, and it's all pretty limited. So the first rule is that I can only use the words that Gary clones speak in game. This includes, but is not limited to, words like what, haha, ah, and of course, Gary. The second rule is that I need to be able to translate any English word into Gary ease. So the first obstacle is to use the limited Gary vocabulary and adapt it so that it can express any word in English. There are 11 unique Gary words, and that is if we also differentiate between Gary and Gary. That is not a lot. English and most other languages have more than 11 letters and sounds. So what are we going to do? Well, let's take a page from tonal languages, with some of the most notable tonal languages being Mandarin Chinese, Vietnamese, Cantonese, and even smaller languages not from Asia like Igbo, which is spoken in Nigeria, or Cherokee that is spoken by the Native American tribe of the same name. This means that one word, let's just take Gary for example, can have several meanings depending on what kind of tone we apply to it. Mandarin uses four straightforward tones and I'm going to steal that for this project so the tones will be an up tone, Gary, a down tone, Gary, a down up tone, Gary, and lastly a neutral tone, Gary. With just these four tones, we have turned the simple word Gary into four other words. So, all together, including the word Gary without any tones, we turned one word into five. This means our 11 unique Gary words are now 55, which is enough for us to work with. Using tones like this isn't all that weird either. The Garys can be heard saying Gary with some different tones. Gary? Gary! Haha, <laughs> Gary! Every language has what are called phonemes. These are distinct sounds that are made when speaking the language. This obviously differs from language to language, both the number of phonemes and the kinds of phonemes. The language with the most phonemes is the Ta language spoken mostly in Botswana and Namibia, and is generally considered to have over 100 phonemes, due in large part to their use of different clicking sounds. For reference, our target language here, English, is considered to have 44 phonemes, but this can vary a little depending on the accent or dialect. Yes, even within a language, the number of phonemes can change as well, but standard American English is said to have 44. If we assign one of our 55 Gary tonal words to an English phoneme, we will have enough and some to spare. So we have the basic concept, by assigning a Gary word to a phoneme, we can start to build out a Gary language. I found a breakdown of the phonemes that are most commonly used in English, and applied the easiest of the Gary words to those first. I think the easiest Gary words to speak are the non-tonal words, followed by the down tone, then the up tone, the neutral tone, and then the down up tone. So after I applied the easiest of the Gary words to the most commonly used phonemes, I also had to make a few changes because there were some phoneme combinations that pair together quite often, but were using the same Gary word with just a simple tone change. I want to avoid as many instances of saying something like, um, two or three times in a row. Even with tonal changes, it can sound less like a Gary language and more like a public speaking class. 
with all the phonemes paired to a Gary word. I wanted to make this easier, so I created some scripts to help me translate and fine-tune my selections. I won't go into the specifics of these, but these are the basics. In Python, I used the Phonemizer library and eSpeak backend to do the heavy lifting for identifying the phonemes. So I feed it a string of text, and it will spit out the phonemes. Neat! I then take the unique ASCII character of each of the phonemes, because they have a pretty diverse number of characters, and each ASCII character code is unique, and I map that to a Gary word. Now, it's a bit more complicated than that because some of the phonemes actually use two characters, so I had to create some functions to identify those and combine them. Lastly, I have a dictionary with all the Gary words, and it's a simple process of just mapping the ASCII code to the Gary word, and voila! A bona fide Gary language. Want to hear some Gary-ish? Of course you do. Let's take some well-known Fallout quotes and translate them. I'm going to do my best at speaking Gary-ish, but even as the foremost expert on the language, <laughs> I am not that great. War. War never changes. Hmm. Haha. -ha. Guh. Hmm. Haha. -ha. Guh. Gary. Gary. Ah. Oh. Gary. Gary. Haha. -ha. Gary. Who wa ga? Better dead than red. Who Gary? Gary. Gary. Ga. Gary. Ga. Huh? Gary. Gary. Ga. Gary. Ga. Glory to Atom. Wa. Ah. Uh, hmm. Ga. Wa. Gary. Ga. Um. Gary, Gary, Gary. Please assume the position. Ah, ah, uh, wa, ga, Gary, hmm, wa, Gary, huh, Gary, ah, Gary, ga, ah, hmm, Gary, Gary. <laughs> All right, so that's, you know, that's something. That last one sounds less like a translation and more like a transcription of what happened. So, I'm sure many of you see a number of issues, so let's address them. First, in almost every instance, the Garyan language takes much longer to say than the English counterpart. That is a byproduct of choosing one Gary word for each phoneme in English. It's going to just be a lot longer and more cumbersome to say. The second is that some sentences don't sound like a Gary language at all. If you have the right mix of phonemes, you end up with a bunch of ums, ahs, and hmms which is not all that Gary-like. Even if I map the most commonly used phonemes with all the variations of Gary and Gary. As an example, the sentence, have you heard of her, becomes, um, um, ah, uh, ah, uh, wa, um, ah, uh, ga, hun, ah, uh, um, ah. Uh. That sounds less like me actually speaking another language and more like me trying to speak another language that I don't actually know. I mostly just said um, ah, and ah. It's also funny to feed words that Gary does say, like um, into the translator since the phonemes used to make it are completely different. Um becomes huh, Gary, which I find really stupid and funny. However, the third main issue is one that is fundamental to the approach I chose, and that is that the Gary clones obviously don't speak like this. A direct translation from English or really any language just doesn't work. I want to expound on this last point a bit more and look at the actual structure of Garyish and see what conclusions we can come to when looking at it linguistically. So everyone that's upset because this is obviously not a Gary language, just hold on. First, some observations about all lines of Gary dialogue. Every single line has the name or word Gary in it. This is an important element, and Gary can be short, and sometimes it's cut off. So all the lines have this Gary part, but many of them have modifier words, the ones we used in the translation attempt. Words like who, ah, haha, ha, and so on. And these also have meaning. Lastly, like mentioned previously, there are different tones applied and stressed syllables can also change. With those observations, we can also make inferences about Gary clones. 
The first is that their language derives from English, since the original Gary spoke English in the vault and presumably passed some of that onto the clones. The second is that the clones likely know more English words than are presented to us in game. Assuming that they don't ever say a certain word because it's not included in their lines would be like assuming that any other NPC doesn't know a basic English word because we never hear them saying it in the games themselves. Like just because we never hear Kaiser say the word toilet doesn't mean that it's not part of his lexicon. And so the same logic extends to the Gary clones. It's obvious that their language is limited, we just don't really know by how much. It is also reasonable to assume that most of what they speak of and refer to are only related to what they can do, who they can meet, and what they can encounter in Vault 108. That limits the number of things that they have to describe in their language. They don't need a word for horse because there aren't any, and as far as they're concerned, there is no such thing. Same thing with badminton or enchiladas or yeah, you get the picture. So their language would just be simpler because they have less to describe. So what implications do these things have for the real Gary E's? I propose a few things and would be interested in anything you have to add to this. Since the word Gary is part of every single known expression, I think it would be referring to the word or concept of I or you. I don't think their language is nuanced enough to express a range of pronouns. Again, even though the language is likely more complicated than we see in game, I just don't think it's even close to as complex as most real world languages. It would make sense though that the concept of myself or another person would both be captured by the word Gary. I say this because, firstly, there are only Garys in the vault. Gary is all they know. Secondly, a very basic way to express ideas is to refer to the person in question and then some idea, whether that is an action or a feeling. Think of how people reduce language when trying to talk caveman. Me hungry. You go. Me play. Just replace any instance of me, you, we, they with Gary because in Vault 108, we are all Gary. 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 And we are already part of the way there. Now the additional words and tones or emphases are also important in helping convey an idea. They seem to be communicating a feeling in many instances or a feeling verb combination. Bethesda did a good job creating lines that could communicate a general idea due to the delivery and the game files also tell us what the intent is behind the specific lines. You know what, let's do a little quiz. What feelings is this trying to convey? Ah, Gary. Game files label this as a response from going from combat to normal behavior and the emotion is labeled as sad. So Gary was excited to fight and was pretty disappointed when he didn't get the chance to. Was your impression something along those lines? How about another? Huh? Gary? Game files label this as a response when having lost track of a target and going back to an idle state with a sad emotion. This does give the impression of a Gary that is kind of confused. Alright, one more. Gary! Game files label this as being a combat start response and the emotion is anger. It definitely gives the feeling of Gary being angry or aggressive. You were probably able to get all of those, or at least get pretty close with each one because the supporting words and the way it is said effectively transmits an emotion that is widely understood. So real Gary Yees is likely quite simplistic, although maybe not as simplistic as the game implies. The word Gary could very likely be analogous to I or you or another pronoun, both because of how often it is used and the fact that Gary clones are only familiar with other people being Gary. So having it mean a person in general is very reasonable. Lastly, emotions and basic intents or actions are also communicated through supporting words, tones, and stresses. So Gary clones are probably communicating ideas like, I attack. Gary! Who is there? Huh? Gary? I scared. Um, uh, Gary? or found you. <laughs> Gary! So while there doesn't seem to be a nice clean way to translate complex ideas into true Gary-lick, 
If you want to give the impression of being a person of culture by being fluent in Garyese, or need a simple cipher for your messages, Garyish is your ticket. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a vault to convert. Gary? Um, Gary, ah, uh, guh, Gary, um, Gary, guh, um, guh, who, ah, uh, ha, ha. Gary! Gary, um, Gary, um, Gary, 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 guh. Oh! Ah! Gary! Oh! Hey. That's it for me. If you liked this, let me know by dropping a Gary in the comments. If you didn't like it, let me know why by saying Gary in the comments as well. If you want me to try and look at other Fallout languages in a similar way, like or comment to let me know. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next week.